sitting next to her casket.
Left to mourn two lovely young boys. We ask that you keep them in your prayers. You can see her mother by her side. We saw her sister in the local Pinterest area. And so many other family and friends like yourself.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Praise be God, the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. I bless the body of Rosanna with the holy water that we call the baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who are baptized Christ Jesus who baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of the baptism, Rasania put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. Let us sing together, God gives his people strength.
As I said at the beginning, this is a hard day, a difficult day. When we heard that Razania had died in Trinidad, it almost seemed like a dream, like it wasn't real. It was so far away. But coming now to this funeral day, when we pray for her and bring her to the burial, it seems all too real, all too painful. Rasamia was a young woman full of life, full of joy, full of energy. And no doubt that's why some of you today are wearing colorful garb, colorful clothes. As we come together today to pray for the soul, ask God to receive her into his kingdom, to be merciful to her, to forgive her of her sins, and to give her a place of refreshment and light. We are also challenged to look at our own lives, brothers and sisters. Razania is in God's hand. God will judge her, God will examine her. She's in God's hands. Nobody can tell God where she's going or where she's not going. That's God's business, not yours. Right? Today, the business is ours. We are to examine our lives in the face of death. In the face of our mortality, in the face of our fragility, in the face of sickness, we are to examine our lives in the light of the Word of God and see how we are going. Are we going to the Lord or are we going away from the Lord? That is the question that we have to ask ourselves today. The Gospel presents to us some wisdom, some teachings in order to put our lives on the path towards the fullness of life. You see, life there is but a taste of the life that God has for us in eternity. All the joy that we have there, all the laughter that we have there is only a fraction of what God has in store for us. But we have to make sure that we place ourselves on the road towards God. Because we can be on the road to the other direction too. We have to look at our lives, brothers and sisters, and examine our attitudes, and question ourselves, Jesus, it said, went up the mountain, and after he sat down, he began to teach his disciples. To teach them. Jesus was a teacher. He taught many things. By words and by actions, Jesus taught many things. As I knew myself, committed her life to teaching little ones, to making sure that they had a strong foundation on which to build when they left the social center, to help them to be strong little people, to help them to open their minds to what is good, to help them to Them that they are special, that they are holy, that they are good, that they are blessed by God. That was, she committed her life to a little one. The question for us today is, what are we teaching our children? 
in superior in sports and in clothes. So, what are we teaching our children? That is the question. That's part of the question today. Because God has entrusted these children to us and given us the responsibility for making sure that they grow and mature and develop men. Are we teaching them how to love? Are we teaching them how to, to live good lives? Are we teaching them to be lifelong learners? Or are we teaching them jealousy? Are we teaching them how to see what? Are we, what are we teaching them? Are we teaching them generosity or selfishness? Are we teaching them faith or are we teaching them doubt? What are we teaching our young children? When we on the streets, when we at our home, when we in our schools, what are we teaching them? Jesus taught his disciples. Razania committed her life to teaching these little ones how to read, how to write, how to color, how to play well, how to resolve conflicts among themselves as little ones, how to get into the kitchen and protect yourself from fire and so on. As parents, are we really being parents? That is, that's a big question today. That's an enormous question. Some parents think their children are their friends. And they let them do what they want. Are we teaching our children discipline? Jesus sat down and he taught his disciples. One day when, after they saw Jesus pray, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus taught them that prayer that we say many, many times a day, our Father. Not just a prayer, but a method of praying, to praise God, to honor his name. To bring to God all our needs and concerns. To ask God from, for protection from the tests that will come in life. To deliver us from evil. Because sometimes we can have evil inclinations. Jesus taught his disciples. What did he teach them today specifically? And what does he teach us today specifically? Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? To be poor in spirit is to have a humble soul. A humble soul. To recognize that None of us are the be all and the end all of life. To recognize that God is always above and around us. To be poor in spirit. This is the kingdom of heaven. If we can build our lives and grow in that poverty of spirit, that humility of soul, the kingdom we shall see, the kingdom of heaven. We shall live a blessed life. Jesus himself was poor in spirit. You see, when Jesus taught, he lived what he taught. He lived what he taught. He didn't just teach for teaching's sake. He taught from what he knew and how he knew to be in relationship with God. A humble spirit. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. We have a lot of people who are mourning, grieving, in other words, who feel sadness in their lives because of death, because of sickness, because of disappointment. 
Some people might say, shake out of it, get out of it, go out, do something. But the truth is, as human beings, we have to be able to go through the mourning and grieving process in order to find healing, in order to be able to give comfort to others when they are in their grief. You see, a lot of people try to mask their grief. No, they're not mourning. They try to put a false smile on their face. But Jesus reminds us that, yes, there are times when we must grieve, like today. There are times when we have to lament some things that are going wrong in our families and in our communities and address them. Not to just sit in a blind eye. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall find a comfort. For they shall find at the end the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Jesus teaches us today to be peacemakers, not twaka makers. Not to push the fight. Jesus teaches us to be peacemakers, for we will be called children of God. Why? Because God is about peace and reconciliation. God sent His Son, Jesus, so that we would no longer be alien and strangers to God our Father, but that we might be reconciled through the blood of Jesus Christ, through His death on the cross, we would be reconciled to God. That's the whole purpose of Jesus, is coming to the earth, being born, live, die, and rise again was for our peace. You know, some people say, make sure before you die, you make your peace with God. Yes. But not only with God, make your peace with each other. But some people have, you know, quarrels with each other. They have, they will forget when they quarrel with each other about but they still vex after 20 years. Make your peace now. Be peacemakers. Reconcile yourself now. There's a friend of mine who says that, you know, in days gone by, when you heard of a death, it was an older person. Now, when you hear somebody dies, like, how old were they? After this whole pandemic of COVID, we recognize that death has no respecter, death is no respecter of age. Death doesn't respect you if you're young, if you're middle-aged, or if you're old. Cancer doesn't respect you if you're young, if you're middle-aged, or if you're old. Not that, not that we only teach with our mouths, 
with our words, but that we teach with our actions and with our attitudes and with our behaviors because they speak louder than words. To teach the next generation to love God and to love our neighbor, to respect God and to respect our neighbor. To pray, to teach our children how to pray. You know, somebody, we used to say that Dominica was a praying country. I don't know if we can say that anymore. How many of us teach our children in our homes how to pray? How to make the sign of the cross? How to kneel down by our bed beds? How to thank God for the day. How to pray the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be. How many people actually take time to bring their children to church on a Sunday? Or they prefer to go to a grand day? That's the test. That will be the test. Do you prefer being here on Sunday? Or being or going for breakfast. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. You laugh, but it's true. Brothers and sisters, as we come here today to pray for our sister, to pray for her eternal soul. We come also to comfort her mother and her father. We come to show support to her children, her two boys, my cousins. But we come most of all to check ourselves too. We have to check ourselves. What we value the teachings that we live by and what we teach to the next generation. That will be very, very important. As we come here today, I want you to remember, as we come here in such large numbers, I want you to also remember Razana's sons as she leaves them behind. Look out for them. Take care of them. Support their father, support their grandparents. Make sure they always have what they need. It's not easy to lose a mother at such a young age. So let us pray. And let us examine ourselves. May God grant us all that we need so that we may be good teachers. Amen. My sisters and brothers of the stand. Let us be silent before the Lord for a moment. Gathered in sorrow, Yes, by the faith, we bring the prayers of our hearts to our compassionate God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Razana receives the light of Christ.
scatters the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord you raise the dead to life. Give our sister Rosanna an eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord the family and the friends, for the family and friends of Rosanna, for her children, the parents, for her partner, that they may be healed, that they will receive comfort and consolation that comes from God that comes even as they mourn. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the soul of Rosanna. May God receive her kindly with generosity and forgiveness. May he reward her faith for the deeds. May she continue and may he take her into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. We give thanks for the love which Rosanna showed and taught in this life, especially to the children of the social center. May she know the utter and immense love of God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who mourn today the passing of our sister. May they receive strength, comfort, and consolation as they live in the sure hope of eternal life and of joy in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us assembled here in faith and confidence as we pray for our sister. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of Jesus' return. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful Father, you always listen to the sincere to sincere prayers. As we celebrate this funeral rites for our sister Razania, we ask that you grant her a share in the blessed reward which you have prepared for all your sins. We ask this to Christ our Lord. That is the same.
is my sacrifice and yours to be acceptable to God the Father of Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the Lord, for the praise and glory of the city, for the good and the good of the Lord. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Rosania, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may also find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, and those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we complain. Thanks. He gave it to his disciples. 
disciples say, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of His body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Rosania may come to the eternal tip of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Although this congregation will disperse in song, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let us take our sister to her place of rest. 
trust that you felt like you were right here with us during the funeral service and as we continue to the burial ground we pray that you will find comfort as you see your loved one being laid to rest we thank you for choosing emmanuel and may god continue to be with you all And you can well imagine how full this place is. Quite a few persons have turned out in support of the family and to show appreciation for all that Razania meant to them. I do, I do. She has to take her time to go listen. Take all your time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let us pray. Our sister Rosania has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, this is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. And again, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. Glory and kingship be his forever and ever. Amen. God of endless ages, through disobedience to your law, we fell from grace and death entered the world. But through the obedience and resurrection of your son, you revealed to us a new life. You granted Abraham, our father in faith, a burial place in the promised land. You prompted Joseph of Arimathea to offer his own tomb for the burial of the Lord. In a spirit of repentance, we earnestly ask you to look upon this grave and to bless it. So that while we commit to the earth the body of your servant Rosania, her soul may be taken into paradise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Azania and we commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust unto dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Dear friends, in reverence, let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. Gracious Lord, forgive the sins of those who have died in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remember all the good they have done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Welcome them into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious to hear us. Let us pray for those who mourn. Comfort them in their grief. Lighten their sense of loss with your presence. Increase their faith and strengthen their hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious to hear us. Let us pray also for ourselves on our pilgrimage through life. Keep us faithful in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious to hear us. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again. Though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer in sadness for your servant, Razania. Deliver her soul from death. Number her among your saints. Clothe her with the robe of righteousness to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Razania, O Lord. Let the petrol light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
Leave it, you know.
No problem, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, can't move the last one. 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 Can't move the last one.
No, the other one? You want it? Okay, all right. Let's, no, just come up and try to organize that now. If you want to hang yourself, I can hold you. 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 I can hold you.
the end of the funeral service of Razana Khadija Janwis of Sufria who lived at King's We thank you for joining us as a family. We trust that you have been healing. We have felt right here with us. Once again, on behalf of all of us at Emmanuel, we extend condolences to all of you. May God continue to strengthen you all. So when they finish, let me just put it down. Okay. Okay. Oh, I 
So once again, we want to say thanks for joining as a part of the family, and we will continue to bless you all. So we are saying bye. Uncle, would you like to say anything? This Friday is our uncle. Do you want to say anything? What can I say now? She was my loving niece. We were very nice. And I mean, it's just hard, you know what I'm saying? It's just hard. I mean, she continues to rest in peace. That's all I can say, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. And you did your best in trying to dress her too. I did. I did. I did. Can you say something? Huh? Niger. Niger. You want to say something? No? Hi, my daughter. Thank you, Emo. Thank you. Okay, and there is uh, her sister. So we are saying goodbye. Once again, we just ask that you remember her, her young son in prayer. Jesus you see the family members right there. So you see the family members right there. Once again, goodbye.